Hello students, in this session let us understand what is Scrum framework and introduction to DevOps. So in the last class I have told you about the agile methodologies and I have give you, given you the list of various agile frameworks that we have. And I also told you that a survey was conducted in which 58% of the companies have used Scrum framework in the agile methodology. So today let us understand what exactly is this Scrum. Okay, so Scrum is basically one of the agile framework which helps in giving more productive and you know more creative ideas in the development of a particular product. Now how is this happening? Let us see in detail. So talking about what exactly happens in this Scrum. So in Scrum basically whatever product we are going to develop that is divided into small small chunks okay or small small parts and each chunk is called as a sprint okay. And that sprint, one sprint is developed for up to 1 to 2 weeks, that means approximately 14 days, right. Now while each sprint is being developed for around 14 days, in that sprint span, the whole team who is involved in the product development will be working on the single sprint only. In previous methodologies that we have seen, though the product is divided into n number of modules, each module is developed separately by different different teams. Okay, later on they were integrated but what is happening in the scrum, the same product is divided into small chunks and in, in the development of each chunk, every the whole team is working together. Okay, so because of that you uh, after each sprint that means after 14 days a working product is delivered to the customer. After that the customer is giving feedback to the sprint team depending upon the feedback that is collected from the customer. In the next sprint, modific necessary modifications are being made. So this is how your scrum actually works. So let us see who are the people who are involved in the scrum. The first person who is involved in the scrum is the product owner. He is the one who is responsible to collect the requirements from the customer, finalize those requirements and for each requirement give a priority number. So depending upon the priority number, the team takes that priority requirement and it will develop it first. Okay, so along with that the product owner is also responsible to make sure that the product is delivered to the customer in time. Now let us look into the second person who is involved who is the scrum master. The scrum master is the one who, is, who will actually interact with the people who are developing the product. So his duty is to make sure that the requirements in that correct in the current sprint are executed properly. If the team is facing any issues, he is the one who is responsible to rectify those issues also. Now the next person who is involved in this particular scrum is the development team. They are also called as the scrum team. These are the people who actually develop the requirements in the given sprint time. That means in, in given 14 days. So after 14 days, a working product is delivered to the customer. Now let us see what are the artifacts that are involved in our scrum that means the documents that are involved in your scrum right. So the first document that is involved in your scrum is your product backlog. Now in this product backlog you will have list of all the requirements that are needed to be developed for that particular project right with all priority numbers and all. So all requirements will be there in this product backlog. Now the next one you have is your sprint backlog. In sprint backlog few of the requirements from the product backlog and ta are taken and they are kept in the sprint backlog okay. So sprint means 14 days. In that 14 days what are the list of requirements that I have to develop. You cannot develop all the requirements in one sprint. So you take few of the requirements and you put it in the sprint backlog. From the sprint backlog the next one you have is the burn down charts. This is a document which gives a pictorial representation as to in this sprint how many are developed, how many are pending, how many are in progress. This information is given in a pictorial format using this burn down charts. The next one you have is the product increment. This is a folder or a document which has all the increments after each sprint. So after each sprint there is a working product that is delivered to the customer. First product is kept here. When this after second sprint the second product is added to the first product that means integration happens actually in this product increment document. So these are the four main artifacts that are used in your scrum framework. Okay. Now let us see how exactly does this scrum work. So the scrum actually works with the uh, it is initiated by the product owner. He is the one who is actually responsible to list all the requirements, give their uh, priorities and all and place them in the 
product backlog. After that, you have the next phase where your, the few of the requirements from the product backlog are put it into the sprint backlog. Okay. Now, from the sprint backlog, whatever requirements are there, they are actually developed by the team in the coming 14 days. So, in the coming 14 days, while the team is developing all the products, the scrum master is responsible to meet them on daily basis, take the feedback, collect their problems, solve their problems and all. So, once the complete product is being developed, it is going to go for the sprint review. So, in sprint review, you will be having the stakeholders who will look at the product after the 14 days. Okay. So, depending upon their feedback, you the team will sit together and they will move to the next phase which is called as sprint retrospective. So, in this particular phase, your team will check as to what is the feedback given by the customer, how did I work, work in this current sprint, what are the modifications that I have to do in the next sprint. So, all these things are detailed, detailedly, uh, you know, thought of in the next one which is called as sprint retrospective. So, your scrum goes uh, in this particular flow. Okay. Now, the next one you have is the scrum board. Okay, this scrum board is also an additional part in your scrum uh, framework where the list of all requirements are written, which is in progress, which completed, how many are pending, all the details you will be having so that team can understand better as to what is their work progress. Now, let us see into some of the advantages and disadvantages of the scrum. So, the advantages are it is very quick. Okay then it, it is flexible. So, after each sprint, since you are taking a customer feedback, you can do the modifications whenever necessary. There is a lot of teamwork here. Constant improvement is there. Okay. Customer satisfaction is also there. So, these are the various advantages. Now, let us look into the disadvantages. The first one you have is confusing roles. So, when a lot of people are working as a team, sometimes you will have a lot of confusing as to what is my role in the team. Okay. Hard to change during sprints. So, in, when your sprint, when your development of the product is there within the sprint, you cannot do any modifications. Modifications can be done only after the sprint. Okay, needs discipline, uh, not, it is not used for greater projects and depends upon the product owner. So, the scrum master as well as the product owner plays a very important role. If they are not able to make the team work properly, then you will not get the correct output in your scrum. So, these are the disadvantages. Now, let us move on to one more topic, which is called as DevOps. So, first let us see what is the basic difference between DevOps and Agile. So, Agile and DevOps, both of them divide your whole product into small, small parts and try to deliver those products in increments. Okay, then what is the difference here? In Agile, development and delivery happens. Once the customer gets the delivery of the product, the agile team will not bother about the software. Whereas in DevOps, it develops, it delivers and after that, it is responsible for the maintenance of the software also. Okay, so its duty is not to just deliver the product. Its duty is also to make sure that your software is working successfully throughout its lifetime. That is the basic difference between agile and DevOps. So in agile, you have the delivery. Uh, development team, you have the testing team and you have the deploy, deploy, I mean you have the testing team and you have the maintenance team. So, you have three different types of teams whereas in DevOps, all of them will work as a single team only. So, the same team will develop, test, deploy and then maintain the particular product also. That These are the basic differences that you have between the agile as well as the DevOps. Now, let us look into what exactly is this DevOps? So, DevOps is basically an enhanced version of your Agile. It is a combination of two words, development team, operations team, Dev, Ops. Okay. So, what is happening here? So, previously we had the waterfall model. So, if you have correct requirements, you know what exactly to develop. Okay. You are not going to do any modifications in, in the middle of the development. You go for waterfall model. Then came the agile model. In agile model, you are not developing the whole product together. You are developing it in small, small parts. So, where you can do any modifications in between the development. Then came the DevOps. So, in DevOps, the next enhanced version of your agile. Here, not only you are developing in small, small parts, after delivering, you are even maintaining it also. So, in DevOps, you have lot of automated tools which will help us to develop, test, monitor, maintain the product successfully. Okay. Now, let us look into one small use case here. In 2011, Facebook has introduced few features like timeline, music and all 
to all its users. So over the night when 500 million users have updated Facebook, the server of the Facebook crashed. Okay. So since it crashed, they came up with a new concept called as dark launching technique. Now what exactly is this dark launching technique? Here, instead of delivering the complete uh, features to all the users at a time, they are going to select few users and only for them they are going to own the features. Okay, so few users only will get update. Depending upon the feedback those users are giving, if there are any bugs, it is going to rectify those bugs. Okay, so after rectifying the bugs, if, all, if everything is fine with this small set of users, then only it is going to switch on the features for all the users of the Facebook. This technique is called as the dark launching technique and this was possible because of continuous development, testing, integration, deployment and monitoring and this is the cycle of your DevOps. So Facebook by implementing this DevOps and dark launching technique, it was able to successfully add new features to all its 500 million users. Okay, so what exactly is happening in this uh, DevOps? In DevOps, you have development team, you have maintenance team. In development team, they plan, code, build and test. Okay, after that, they come to the deployment. So in deployment, you have the operations team. They deploy, operate and monitor your particular product. Okay, now as I've told you, DevOps is a, co is a combination of development and operations. Now let us see what are the various tools that are used in your DevOps environment. So if I talk about the plan, in planning phase, see in every phase that you can see here, you have some automated tools that are used by your DevOps team. So in planning phase, you have Jira. Okay, by using Jira, they actually plan. In coding, you have Git. Okay, and you have subversion. Using Git and subversion, uh, you do various codes here. Okay, then you have build. In building phase, they use Maven, they use Apache, and they use Gradle. In the testing phase, we have the Selenium, we have the JUnit. Then comes the important part, integration. In integration, all the sprints or all the small, small pieces of your product are put together, okay, and they are integrated and they are tested together with the help of Bamboo, Hudson and Jenkins, okay. Then in the deployment phase, you deploy your product either by using Docker, Vagrant or Puppet. Okay, then you have the operation phase. In operation phase, you have Chef, SaltStack, Ansible using which you operate your particular software. Then you have the monitor. For continuous monitoring, you have Nagio, Splunk, Stack. These are the various tools that we have which automatically help us in the development, deployment and maintenance of your particular software. So in details, we will see in the next session. Thank you.